If you wake up in the morning and you do not like to eat, mm. you're not hungry. Yeah. It's probably because your blood sugar is very, very low. I was sent this video by Gary Brucka and asked to review it. And there's a few points that I thought were going to be interesting to make. The first very important point is that if your blood glucose is low upon waking, this will not suppress your hunger, rather it will activate it. Because hypoglycemia, which is low blood glucose, and calorie restriction, increase the production of what are called neuropeptides, and these are just molecules inside of the brain. And the specific neuropeptides that are increased are responsible for increasing appetite. So point number one is low blood glucose is not the reason that you are not hungry in the morning. It is a fairly well-documented phenomenon that you become increasingly more hungry during the times that you traditionally eat. Therefore, if you're used to skipping breakfast, you're simply not going to get hungry for breakfast. And this is likely due to an alteration in ghrelin, which increases appetite, and an alteration in leptin, which will decrease your appetite. What happens is, you wake up in the morning, you're fasted, you don't feel like eating, your yeah. blood sugar continues to trend down. So this was the second point that popped out in this video that I wanted to mention. So as we fast, our blood glucose doesn't just continue to decline. If our blood glucose just continuously declined as we continued to fast, we would likely end up in a coma quite quickly. Our blood glucose is actually regulated extremely well into a very tight range, especially when we're fasting. And I believe Gary is overlooking the fact that we have a system that's entirely designed to keep our blood glucose stable. And this is modulated by hormones such as glucagon and glucocorticoids, which increase the release of stored glucose and increase the production of glucose in the liver referred to as gluconeogenesis. Therefore, after a meal, our blood glucose will come back down to normal within a range typically between 75 and 90. And the body has many different mechanisms to keep our blood glucose in that range even when we're fasting. You eat late in the morning or early in the afternoon and it skyrockets, right? And this is why you have an energy spike between 2 and 4 in the afternoon. So this is one thing I do agree with Gary on. The longer we fast, the more physiologically insulin resistant we get. You see, when we're in a fasted state, we release a high degree of fatty acids into the bloodstream. And these fatty acids are used as energy. However, a high amount of fatty acids in the bloodstream can inhibit insulin from functioning properly, specifically at the level of the skeletal muscles. And the same thing will occur if we're eating an extremely high fat ketogenic diet. And when we become physiologically insulin resistant, our blood glucose will remain elevated for a longer period of time because insulin's function is to drive glucose into the cells. With that being said, this is not the pathologic form of insulin resistance that occurs in diabetes. This is reversible and it's considered physiologic because we become insulin resistant in order to spare glucose for tissues that need it, such as the brain during a fasted state. And it simply takes a little bit of time after reintroducing carbohydrates to regain 100% insulin sensitivity. So he is correct that our blood glucose will go much higher and stay elevated for a longer period of time when we consume the same amount of carbohydrates after a prolonged fast. Yeah. So some of the best things that these women can do is get 20 to 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of waking. Okay. Because remember that a prolonged period of low blood sugar will be perceived by the pituitary gland as starvation and it will begin to throttle back your metabolism. I do absolutely agree with Gary that protein intake at breakfast is extremely helpful for increasing metabolic rate and overall longevity. And many studies demonstrate that a higher protein breakfast appears to be extremely advantageous for fat loss. And a lower glycemic load, which typically means lower carbohydrate, higher protein breakfast is associated with higher energy levels. And even a higher protein breakfast increases the thermic effect of feeding. And there are many studies in which it does appear that early morning protein feedings can increase metabolic expenditure throughout the rest of the day. With that being said, he then went on to say that low blood glucose is sensed by the pituitary gland, which will throttle down the metabolism. You see, he is correct that low blood glucose can be sensed within the brain and can decrease energy expenditure. And while it's not very important, he is incorrect about the location. You see, glucose sensing occurs in the hypothalamus and a few other brain regions. However, it does not occur in the pituitary gland. With that being said, the extent to which low blood glucose will lower our metabolism is extremely negligent. But I do also agree that a higher protein breakfast may be advantageous. So while Gary did make a few mistakes on his physiology that may simply make his points a little bit more confusing, 
I do agree that a higher protein breakfast can help an individual lose weight. However, if skipping breakfast allows you to stick to your goals better, then there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. And if you'd like to learn how to take control of your health and energy, send me a DM to sign up for coaching.